Chuck, it's great to see you today. Great to see you, Jason. Chuck, you were formerly a squadron leader in SEAL Team 6. When you look at what's happening today in Ukraine on the battlefield, what do you think? How are things going? Well, uh, Russia has shown either the ineptitude of its leadership, uh, the carelessness with their loss rates. But when Russia is making a gain, uh, and they've made some small advances, uh, the, the cost militarily has been extremely high in materiel and manpower. What's also very interesting is when you're sustaining these kinds of losses, unit cohesion breaks down. Uh, Russian attacks are usually carried out at the platoon and company level. They are sequential attacks. So a platoon is destroyed, another platoon is destroyed. That means a company is destroyed. You march straight through. Pretty soon, a battalion and a brigade are degraded because their forces are moving forward, taking incredible losses. And that is a, that's a hereditary problem with the Russian military going back to imperial times, Soviet times, and Russian times. Uh, extreme losses are not considered cost prohibitive for the Russians. So nonetheless, though, Ukraine is losing territory compared to what it was just two months ago. I mean, how do you see that? Does that mean that Russia is getting ahead? Uh, not really. What the, what the Ukrainians are doing is they are trading distance for time. Uh, for example, the Russians have uh, staged advances in and around Avdivka, but the Ukrainians have retired in good order to better defensive terrain. And, and again, we, we you see Russian daylight attacks being carried out. I look at that and I say, it's better to move at night. You would have had uh, better results. Why aren't the Russians moving at night? It's a case of disorganization. It's a case of lack of training. It takes better troops to operate at night. You see again and again, these Russian attacks, they are always the same. One tank in the front, three or four armored vehicles, another tank, and they always come to grief the same way. Lead tank is knocked out, Ukrainian FBV drones close in, and the entire unit is usually annihilated. Those kind of operations would never be conducted by Ukraine or NATO, but they are the stock and trade of uh, Russian military commanders. You can't win a war that way by losing every engagement. So these very high burn rates where they're just losing soldiers, they're losing technology, they're losing equipment all the time. Uh, how does that play out further? What does that mean for the Russian military? Well, here's an interesting statistic. Uh, Russia is thought to have invaded the initial invasion with approximately 400,000 troops. Now, this is not a one-to-one -one correlation, but it, it it's true. They have lost essentially every person they invaded with 760 days later is dead. They have lost 400,000 killed. Look, that is more people than the United States lost during the entirety of World War II fighting around the globe. Russia controls less territory now than it ever has during the course of the war even with these advances. So I, I'm looking at this militarily. It just absolutely does not seem sustainable to me in terms of the wastage of personnel, materiel, fuel, ammunition. It just isn't going to work long term. So when the United States finally gets its act together and passes aid for Ukraine, what do you think we could expect to see then? Well, unfortunately, uh, you know, I got I to gotta call it as I see it. It's going to take a couple of months to get that ammunition, new equipment over to Ukraine. It will very likely, when it arrives in country, it's going to be diverted to replenish the strategic reserves that Ukraine has drawn on for this last four or five months. You know, I have to lay this at the feet of the United States. This is, a, uh, we've scored a known goal by diminishing the supplies that Ukraine needs to carry on the war. That being said, I expect the Russians to continue offensive actions over the summer. But again, for the same reasons we just talked, I don't see a revolution in Russian tactics. I don't see a new uh, militarily relevant leader rising from the Russian general officer class. I think they're going to continue to fight uh, 
costly battles. And I just, you know, I am still seeing war to come, but I don't see Russia anymore as being able to win it. So do you think, though, when the U.S. technology finally gets there and the Europeans continue to send new technologies to Ukraine, uh, these increased losses that the Russians will face will create more chaos within their military structure? Absolutely. Their burn rate is going to uh, accelerate. I look at it now. They're losing incredible numbers of people. During the battles of Bakhmut, they've lost 45,000 people just in Bakhmut. Avdivka, probably the same, 45,000, 50,000 dead for taking terrain that hasn't advanced the ball. Russia is taking advantage of Ukraine's a ammo famine right now, and they're still losing incredible amounts of people. When Ukraine is back up armed sufficiently with sufficient ammunition reserves, it just means these Russian attacks are going to be even more costly. So there's going to be a point, and especially as Putin goes through mobilization uh, this summer, the people, notice I didn't say soldiers, he's sending in Ukraine, they're not going to fight any better than the, than the people he's got there now, because he is not training soldiers. He is mobilizing civilians. And there is a big difference on the battlefield. You're not going to get a bunch of civilians just off the bus from Moscow to conduct a night attack. It is not going to happen. And as long as they attack during the daylight, Ukraine is going to punish them. Chuck, I appreciate your insight. Thank you. Thanks. Good to talk to you, Jason.